For our next lesson, we're going to look at the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus that are going to be used. And in some cases, in some books, this is the first part that they introduce because we really derive our um, definition of definite integrals in terms of the antiderivative from this particular uh, thing. So fundamental theorem two. If f is continuous and capital G of x equals the integral from some constant a to x of f of t dt. We're switching variables. This is sort of like what we did when we were looking for a pattern. We're integrating to some variable from a to some variable x. Okay, and a can be actually any constant. Then big G prime of x equals dg dx equals f of x. So if you integrate some function with a variable t from a to x, then the derivative of what you get is going to be equal to the function that you started with. So let's have a look at how we can show this. So let's first do it sort of the long way around and show that this actually works. So example one is the long way, long way snooze. Okay, so we're going to take the derivative with respect to x, the integral from 1 to x of dt over t squared. Okay, we want to show that this is equal to 1 over x squared. So let's do it the long way and see if we can, because our function here is 1 over t squared. f of t is 1 over t squared. So let's try it. The integral from 1 to x of dt over t squared is the integral from 1 to x of t to the minus 2 dt, which equals, when we actually integrate it, minus t to the minus 1, because we're dividing by minus 1. We're going to evaluate that from 1 to x. Okay, So we get this is equal to negative x to the negative 1 minus minus 1 to the negative 1. Minus 1 to the negative 1 is the same as minus 1 to the positive 1. When we're minusing that minus, that becomes plus 1. And this is minus x to the minus 1. Now, we could, right here, try to you know, rewrite it as 1 over x, I'm not going to bother because we're just differentiating it again. Because what we're trying to show, remember, is that the derivative of this integral equals 1 over x squared. So now we're going to take the derivative with respect to x. Okay, so d dx of negative x to the minus 1 plus 1. Well, the derivative of 1 is 1. So we take the negative 1 down, multiply, we get positive, and then we drop that to a minus 2. So this is equal to x to the minus 2 plus 0, which equals 1 over x squared, which equals our original f of x. So we just showed that that does, in fact, that taking the integral of the derivative works. Okay? So if we don't, want to have to do that the long way around, we can do example two. Let's say we want to find d dx, the integral negative 1,000 to x, 5 sine t squared dt. Okay? I can't actually integrate that because I don't have a 2t or I don't have a t. I don't have something. I can't do substitution because I don't have the thing I need to substitute with. But I can use my second fundamental theorem to just write that this is 5 sine x squared, which is awesome. My second fundamental theorem. Okay, well, 
that was relatively nice. Okay. Well, let's see what happens if I change it up a little bit. So let's say we wanted to do the derivative with respect to x from x to negative 1,000 t to the 10th cosine t dt. Well, the problem here is that I'm not integrating from something to x, I'm integrating from x to something. But remember, we have a rule, so we should recall one of our rules for integration, which is that the integral from a to b is equal to negative the integral from b to a. So if I want to switch the order, all I have to do is negate this. So this is equal to d dx times negative the integral from negative 1,000 to x. t to the 10th cosine t dt, which I don't have any idea how to find that definite integral, um, that indefinite integral, but I can use my second fundamental theorem and say that this is equal to negative x to the 10th cosine x. And that is lovely. Okay, so what happens if we're not doing something, if we're not doing it to an x? So let's doing it to some function of x. So we're going to do d, the derivative with respect to x of the integral from 5 to x to the fourth, 1 plus radical u du. Okay, so let's do it the long way again, just to see what happens. Okay, so this is the derivative with respect to x. We can integrate this relatively simply. This is u plus 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. And we're going to evaluate this from x to the fourth to 5. So this is d dx plug in x to the fourth plus 2 thirds times x to the fourth to the 3 halves minus 5 plus 2 thirds 5 to the 3 halves. Okay, so I'm going to be differentiating each of these terms in turn. Okay, so this is equal to 4x cubed plus x to the fourth to the one half times 4x cubed. Okay, if we're going to be differentiating it, we take down the three halves, we get that to the one half, and then we're going to multiply by our inner derivative. Now, we normally might just try to expand these brackets, but I'm doing it this way for a reason, because I want to see how we use this inner derivative of x to the fourth. So this is going to be x to the fourth to the power of one half. So I multiplied by three halves, I dropped my power to one half, and then I'm gonna multiply also by my inner derivative, which is four x cubed. We can use the chain rule in this circumstance if we happen to want to, and I do. And this, when I take the derivative, is a constant, so it's just gonna be zero. So that's part of the reason you don't have to worry so much about that constant, what the constant is, because when you take the derivative, it comes out to be zero anyway. So now I'm going to factor out 4x cubed. So I get 4x cubed times 1 plus radical x to the fourth. Okay, so you notice here what I get. So let's take this problem, let's take a long view on this problem and look at the whole thing. So right here, I plugged in x to the fourth, and I got 1 plus radical u. So I got 1 plus radical x to the fourth, but I also multiplied by the inner derivative. So it was the derivative, I'm multiplying by the derivative of this, that. So this is the derivative with respect to x of the function that I am integrating to. So it's not just an x, it's a function of x. So you get the same thing, you just have to multiply by the derivative of the function that you are integrating to. Let's do one more example that looks a bit like that. And we can zoom in a bit more. Okay, so example five, take the derivative with respect to x of the integral from sine x to pi 
of 5t cubed minus 1 to the power of 1 half dt. Okay, again, I'm not, this one I'm actually not, I don't have anything that I can pull out. So this one is going to be a bit problematic for me instead of, in terms of trying to use u substitution. Okay, but what I can do is the first thing I have to do is I know I have to flip, so I'm going to wind up with a negative in front, just like I did with example three. And I know I have to multiply by the derivative of what I'm integrating to. So that's going to be cosine x. And then it's going to be 5 sine cubed x minus 1 to the 1 half. So notice I am replacing with my variable t with sine x, and that's that function. So it's the same idea. We replace our other variable with the function of x, and then we multiply by the derivative, and in this case we have to negate it because we want to also switch the order of integration.